All right, guys, well, I'm back today with another high value and budget 9mm handgun, and this one is pretty slick. It's the Tysus Zagana M16, and they have a whole line of Zagana pistols with rails in different configurations. I'll show you that in a second. Now, this handgun falls under $300. In fact, Beltway Gun and Pawn was nice enough to help me make this video and give me a partial credit towards this firearm, and they're selling it for $279. And if you tell them 704 Tactical sent you over, you can save 10% off this handgun or anything in their store, so that'll drop it down to about $250. Again, if you go in, ask for Clint, and tell them 704 Tactical sent you over, you will save yourself 10% off anything in the store. Now this is such a cool handgun because in my opinion an all metal single double action handgun is great for range shooting and competition, especially one that's sub $300, in fact closer to $250. This has a ton of specs and features that makes it a really impressive handgun for whatever you're going to be using it for. And again, if you don't like this exact model, I can show you right here on the box, they have six different models to choose from. And I actually have the Zagana Sport from back in the day. I I believe I actually picked this one up used from Beltway back a while and I have a full review on this. I absolutely love this handgun. Now I think a different importer, SDS Imports, picked these guys up and are now bringing them in again and now you can find a wide variety of models. Back when I was looking at them I didn't think they had this many available or at least I didn't see this many. Again we are looking at the Zagana M16 but the Zagana Port Sport is pretty slick as well as the K and the F if you want something a little bit more tactical with the rail system, but don't necessarily want to go with the lightning cuts for kind of sport shooting. Again, all of these models are available and they are being imported into the country, but today let's talk about the specs and features of this handgun and how it performed down at the range. So when you purchase this firearm, you'll get the gun, two magazines, the instructions, and a small little cleaning pack that allows you to kind of either run a little cleaning brush through here or put a cleaning cloth through this rod and that's pretty nice to have extras of these i like to throw them in all of my range bags in case i need to kind of clean up the barrel a little bit after i'm done shooting now the package is just a cardboard box so we'll kind of get rid of that and i don't mind if you want to put the money into the gun rather than spending a little bit more on the packaging again especially when this is looking right around 250 dollars after my code now, right off the bat, I want to go from the back to the front and talk about those specs and features. And the first thing you'll notice is that this is a double action, single action gun with a safety on the slide. Now, the safety on the slide, in my opinion, is, is not my favorite. I like to see the safety a little bit easier to actuate with my thumb. And this one seems kind of backwards. One of my complaints about the guns, you actually push it up to take it off safe and then you pull it down to put it on safe. Now this safety is also a decocker. I'll make sure it's clear one more time. So when you chamber around, the safety will be off and the hammer will be locked back. You can actually decock it. And then at that point, you can either carry it decocked with the safety on where the trigger is inoperable, or you can take the safety off and now you have it in double action mode. Or I guess you could carry it cocked without the safety, but I definitely wouldn't recommend that. Now, even if you put it halfway down, the gun will still fire. You need to fully depress it, so there is no way to carry it like cocked and locked with the hammer back. It's just gonna fall down. You'll have to carry it in double action mode, or again, single action mode without the safety, which I don't recommend. This model also has a very nice beaver tail and a very slick grip. Now, what I mean by slick is it's very comfortable, not necessarily very slippery. Now the grips themselves though are slick. When you feel them, they feel really smooth. And this almost looks like a gator skin print, but it really does nothing to add grip to the gun. I almost rather them just leave it off because it really does nothing for me. A little bit more texturing would be nice, but I found that I could get a good purchase on this gun because it does have striations cut in the back strap and the front strap. And I feel like it's got these finger grooves right here so you can get a good high grip. And it also has this slight undercut right here. So again, the beaver tail and the slight undercut allows you to get a good high grip on the gun and really mitigate that recoil. Still talking about the grip and ergonomics, the mags drop free, no problem whatsoever. And I like to see that in a more of a range style, combat style handgun. I don't want the uh, mags to be kind of bound up when they're coming out. 
One problem though is I have average sized hands and I have to break my grip to eject the magazine. You can see where my thumb rests and when I rock over, no matter how far I move my thumb, it is a pretty big stretch. So I have to break my grip, rock the gun around, hit the button, and then come back and get my grip again. That's the same thing with the slide release. I can get just the edge of it right here, but to engage the full slide release, which is very nice with this texturing right here, I have to break my grip slightly. So I just leave my grip broken when I'm loading the mag, and then I regain my grip when I put my secondary hand up and engage my target again, and it works fairly well. I do love this because it stays out of the way and you're not gonna override it for that last round hold open on the last shot, so it is, Pretty slick that it stays out of the way, but you can access it. Again, if you break your grip to eject the mag, rock back up, hit that, and you are good to go. It also has the safety decocker on the opposing side, and overall, the sights themselves are a pretty decent sight setup. They're just a three-dot sight setup, and again, they've got a set screw in the back, so you could adjust this for windage. And now I really want to focus in and kind of talk about that trigger. Again, we will make sure it's clear before we focus on that trigger. Now, in double action mode, this actually has a very smooth and consistent trigger. I'm actually surprised how smooth and consistent that trigger is, and I'm very impressed, especially for around a $250 gun, one of the better double action triggers I've felt in a long time. Single action is very nice as well, an incredibly smooth take up and a crisp break. Smooth take up crisp break and we will take a look at that reset the reset itself is very short audible and tactile followed up by a crisp break this guy's has an impressive amazing trigger for such a high value and budget gun one of the strong points of this handgun now i want to talk about performance and reliability down at the range since this is an all metal frame gun this has almost no recoil. I could absolutely rattle off shots as fast as I could pull the trigger, and the gun stayed incredibly flat, and it was very easy to manage the recoil. Combine that with a very crisp single action trigger, I could see this being a great competitive handgun or a great range use handgun, and it seemed to be very accurate for what it was. I also absolutely love the fact that it's incredibly ergonomic with this rear beaver tail, high up cut, and overall feel while you're engaging targets down at the range. It points naturally and you can easily hit what you're aiming at, and transitions are a breeze because this has a rather long sight radius. You can pick up your target and engage it fairly quickly. Now let's talk a little bit about reliability. And honestly guys, I had a lot of aluminum and steel cased ammo I picked up from AIM Surplus. These guys had a pretty good sale going on and with ammo kind of being is what it is right now, it was nice to pick up some from them. And I ran a lot of aluminum and a lot of steel and some brass through this and it was 100% functional. The ejection pattern was perfect and I saw no blips and kind of weird ejection patterns after the first magazine. The first magazine ran great but I could tell the ejection pattern was a little inconsistent. But after that, it smoothed up and put the brass, steel, and aluminum in a nice pound. Obviously, the brass shot out a little bit further because it was higher power. But it ran that low power junky steel and aluminum just fine. So that is pretty slick that this handgun will eat whatever you put in it. Again, very nice for a high value and budget pistol. So in summary, guys, for about $250, you can't go wrong for this model. Also, the Sport and K and F models are available with rail systems, which are pretty cool. This one's a little bit more compact, but I do love the longer sight radius of this M16 and overall simplified feel of this handgun. I feel like these are going to be great options for competitive use, defensive use, or just range use that is not going to break the bank. I'll continue to update you guys on its performance, but I can confidently recommend this handgun. It had no bobbles down at the range, and it was just a joy to shoot. So again, if you happen to be in Matthews, North Carolina, swing by Beltway Gun and Pawn. I know they had a few of these left in stock. And if you decide you happen to want to pick one up, remember to tell them 704 Tactical sent you over to save 10% off of anything in their store. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one.